There we go. All right, all right. Welcome to today's podcast. We're talking about the worst weight loss plan possible. And uh, you already know what it is, but I'm just going to say it one more time. Um, the worst weight loss plan you can do is the plan that you hate doing. And I know it sounds so obvious, right? But we've been so conditioned to think all or nothing, no pain, no gain, that if we're, we're really motivated, we got to do this miserable stuff in order to, to achieve the weight loss. But you're never going to stick with a plan that you hate, okay? So it's not going to work. It's um, You need to have a plan that you enjoy doing. And so while it may take a little bit longer to figure out what plan works for you, um, I think it's really important to recognize that you're never going to follow a plan that you hate doing, you know, so you're better off putting the time in. Oh my goodness. I guess this ain't going to work. Hold on one second. I got to do something. All right, there we go. <laughs> Let's go straight into the live. No podcast today, apparently. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. <laughs> it's a funny day here. Uh, some days things work out the way you want them to. Sometimes they don't. But uh, today's one of the days they don't work out the way I want them to. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'll do that lesson tomorrow. Anyways, though. But the plan you hate doing, you're never going to do. So th there it is, <laughs> in a nutshell. I guess I could just keep it real simple. <laughs> People probably prefer that anyways. They don't like when I explain things in a long roundabout ways, but that's how I explain them. I'm a hypnotist, so I think context is important. But yeah, if you hate the plan you're doing, you're never going to want to do it. So the alternative is to figure out a plan that you like doing, right? The, the thing that no one ever considers um, because we're constantly being sold these, these fast, quick plans that we can't stick with that don't work, you know? Um, Yeah, I got something I'm dealing with. That's why I'm planning this for this here. Oh, boy. Of all the days. I tell you, you know, sometimes it's so funny how things stop working. <laughs> In all the ways. Uh, hold on one second here. Um, yeah. What's up, Azra? Love falling asleep to your podcast for a fresh reset the next morning. Yeah, that's a great way to use it. Um, I do that all the time. I mean, that's, that's smart. I, that's how I do one of my programs. Um, it, it uses a lot of hypnosis and part of it is that it's delivered through the phone, right? So, um, my program, it's through the phone because I know the hardest part of losing weight is remembering that you're trying to change. The hardest part of change is remembering, right? We, we live our lives on autopilot. And so it's, um, it's really important that when you want to change, you have some sort of reminder system, you know, in place. So yeah, it comes through your phone and there's sessions every morning and night. So you kind of bookend your day with all this positive stuff going in your head. But exactly like you said, having a fresh reset. Um, sorry, folks. <laughs> having a fresh uh, reset is really important, you know, because uh, we need fresh resets. You know, you don't realize because you just take it for granted because you've been conditioned with it your entire life. But um, you're constantly being conditioned to overeat. You're constantly being conditioned to have shitty messages going in your head. And so to all of a sudden have positive, empowering, encouraging messages going into your head regularly is a game changer, you know, as anyone in the program can tell you. But yeah, if you're not in the program, the next best thing is listen to the podcast regularly. Again, as I always say, I'm, I'm not just saying things here. I'm not just telling you things. I'm actually using hypnotic techniques in a positive way, right? Don't be worried. Um, I'm speaking and, and looking to communicate with your subconscious mind. I'm not just looking to just give you information that you forget. Um, I'm looking to impact you on a deeper level is my goal. And so if you listen to me before you go to bed or first thing when you wake up, it has extra impact. And so it's going to be a positive impact because you're not getting this message from anywhere. And I think that uh, the more you hear this message over and over again, the better. You know, it's going to support you.
but I'm glad to hear that, Azra. Great job. Um, Eric says, a lot of lag and freezing with your live today. Is it getting better now? I'm telling you this. Like, I'm having a day here, uh, technologically. <laughs> and uh, I guess personally, I don't know. It's nothing bad, but just crazy stuff. As I said, went to the pizza shop for one slice. The owner gave me an entire box for free. I ended up eating the whole thing. It's so hard to turn down free food. Um, fair enough. And that's really true. You know, something you'll overlook. Let me know if it's still lagging. It's better now. Okay, I know what that was, actually. So that that's fixed. So... <laughs> Harry, it's clear sailing from here on out, folks. I, I I know it. I just know it. Um, yeah, free food is hard to give up, you know, because that triggers into some of our core instincts, right? You you get, you know, we're always doing this thing. This is why. Um, <clears throat> this might lag one more time. Um, uh. Oh my God. Holy macaroni. <laughs> All right, it's not lagging again. I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, that's it. Now, now it's clear sailing. <laughs> so anyways anyways the point is that subconsciously we're always doing this kind of equation where we're comparing how many calories we can get in for how easy it is and so that shows up in a lot of different ways so when we get access to free food when we get access to better deals with the super meals you know um it's hard for us to say no because we're hardwired hardwired we've evolved over millions of years in a food scarce environment so when we get the opportunity to get a lot of calories, to get a lot of calories for a little bit of work or effort or output, it's very appealing to us. And so, yeah, free food's hard to turn down. Um, better value meals is very hard to turn down. And it's very emotional. Again, this goes back to the core thing that you really got to wrap your head around is that you're not a logical being. You are not a logical creature, primarily. Yes, you can be logical, and you are logical sometimes, but primarily, you're not a logical person. And tough shit if you don't, <laughs> if you don't want to believe that. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, doesn't your, doesn't your life really just prove that, you know? But one of the biggest mistakes you're making in your weight loss is that you think you are logical. You know, you think you are this logical person um, who's always making logical decisions. So all I need to lose weight is I just need a better plan. Just tell me what to do, doc. I'll do it. Uh, no, you won't. No, you won't do it <laughs> because all your subconscious automated programming that you have is all leading you to be overweight. So you got to learn to reprogram your subconscious mind, knowing what to do, knowing knowing that value meals aren't worth it. Don't take them. Knowing you got a free pizza, just ignore it. Yeah, you know that already, but you're an emotional being. You're an irrational being who's going to do irrational things. And so we have to accept that acknowledge it and then create strategies to deal with that so yeah i i get it Ezra. that that is um that's a challenge you know so what i would suggest i mean that's a random thing so i would let it go because it's not a big deal um because you're not going to get a lot of free pizzas in life most likely uh but if it was a recurring thing say you did right say this guy really likes you and every every twice a week he brings you a free pizza now you got to figure out a strategy to deal with that OK, but if it's a random one off occurrence, then you, who cares? Just let it go. You know, just I did it. I, I wish I didn't do that again. If you're in the program, we do the redo rehearsal technique on it. But, um, you know, th that that free pizza once every couple of years isn't going to affect your weight at all. You know, so just let it go and uh, move on and recognize that it is hard. It is hard. Um, I saw someone ask, how do you measure? How do you measure yourself? And um I measure myself, I measure myself personally, and I was just talking about this, so I certainly measure my weight. I, I, have, I know where my weight is, and when I was losing weight, I, I weighed myself every day. Um, but the big thing I was really measuring myself on is my behaviors. I'm obsessed with, again, your weight, there's cause and effect. Your weight's an effect. The cause of it is how you eat and live. And so you can't lose weight. 
because your weight is a reflection. It's reflecting something. It's reflecting how you eat and live. So you can't lose weight. You can only eat better and live healthier. And over time, it turns into weight loss. But if you get fixated on the weight loss piece, you're really missing the whole story. You want to get fixated on the process. So I measure myself on how I'm behaving, how I'm eating, how I'm living, and the lifestyle habits I have. I'm also measuring the weight to some degree, but I'm way more obsessed with the, the process. How did I do today? How did I eat today? And if I did well, then I say, hey, I did great today. So that's my main measurement, even above the weight, because the weight is going to reflect that. So um, someone says, do you think females should be 16, 8 intermittent fasting? Um, I would never say, yeah, like, oh, females should intermittent. It's just up to you, you know? If you're a female who likes not eating for 16 hours and is thriving, just eating eight hours a day, then I go ahead. If you're a guy that thrives with that model, go ahead. Um, but if you're a female or a guy who hates that, then I wouldn't suggest it. Now, I'm not an expert in intermittent fasting, but intermittent fasting, again, is really, it's just a strategy to, to cut, narrow down your eating windows so that, you know, the philosophy is that you'll eat less. And um, it's just one more way to, to lose weight. There's a million ways to lose weight, folks. My main message to you is that you choose the weight that works best for you. Okay, so there is no magical weight loss plan. And the most popular diets right now, this is how you know we're, we're just up shit's creek, right? With the weight is uh, the top diets are keto, intermittent fasting, and Weight Watchers. How the fuck, how can it be 2024 and these are the top three diets, you know? The most popular diets. I'm not saying they're the most effective. I'm saying they're the most popular. But go figure. But yeah, again, if you love intermittent fasting, knock yourself out. You know, go ahead and do it. But you certainly don't need intermittent fast to lose weight either. You don't need to be in ketosis to lose weight. <laughs> you know? Uh. And I'm so glad Vicky's here. I love every, you know, Vicky, every time I talk about intermittent fasting, whether you're here or not, I think about you. <laughs> it also works on your hormones and controls insulin resistance. It does. Intermittent fasting. I would never argue. Like, I, I don't argue that keto, if you did keto, I wouldn't argue. <laughs> I wouldn't argue that, uh, you know, you're, you, you'll lose weight. You know, keto, I think, is great for losing weight in the short term. You know, I think intermittent fasting is I like I intermittent fast, folks. So I'm sitting, I'm, I'm kind of talking shit about it a little bit, but I came at it completely different. I, the problem I have with intermittent fasting isn't I think it's wonderful. I think you should take breaks from eating. I think you should have a wider window of not eating. And I think it's natural. It's normal. It's how we've lived for millions of years. I think it's a good thing to do. The problem I have with intermittent fasting is when it's approached as a diet. And so if all you're going to do is start tomorrow trying not to eat for 16 hours, good luck. Good luck. You know, I think it's extreme for most people to jump from eating 16 hours a day to eating eight hours a day. And I think people try it, they struggle with it, and then they feel like another failure. That didn't work either. You know, and I think a lot of times it's, it's sold as you got to get to the 16 hours. Magical things happen at 16 hours. All of a sudden, magically, the, all the hormones fix themselves and now everything gets better. And so I intermittent fast. I don't even call it that. I call it nighttime fasting. And I worked up to it. I, I increased the window of time between when I stopped eating, when I went to bed and when I stopped eating. And I started, it was an hour. And it was two hours. And it was three hours. And now it's probably four. Well, but I go to bed. I go to bed earlier too, so that's harder to tell. But, but I usually, I, I stop eating for about 13 hours a day, 14 hours a day, somewhere in that ballpark. There's no magic going 14 to 16 hours, okay? Because the other side of the intermittent fasting is that I see for a lot of people, now again, I'm biased because I get a lot of people that intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting is not working for them. So again, I'm not arguing the nuts and bolts, write it down on a paper, that's a great way to be, fine. What I'm arguing is, is people's ability to actually live that way, you know? And so what I see a lot with intermittent fasting is people trying not to eat till noon and they get themselves so hungry that when they finally do eat, that now they're binging and they're not losing weight. So again, we got to take everything into account. We can't just look at a plan on paper. So oh, that's the best plan. You know, we got to put it into the real world and also take into account how is my experience following this plan? You know, um, so there's that. <laughs> uh, how often do you weigh yourself? 
Um, you know, I mean, now I'm at my goal weight. I've been at my goal weight for really 30 years. I had one blip 12 years ago. So I, I don't really wear my, weigh myself. It's kind of boring. You know what I mean? I'm the same weight. Why do I know I'm the same weight? Well, I, I can kind of sense it, but most mostly because I live the same, I eat the same way week in and week out and I live the same lifestyle. And so my weight kind of stays the same. Um, when I was losing weight, I was weighing myself every day. Again, I say this all the time, but I can't think of anything crueler to do to yourself than to want to lose weight and then weigh yourself once a week. I, I just find that to be so cruel to do to yourself because your weight fluctuates each and every day. My weight fluctuates each day on average two pounds, you know, up to about five pounds is about the max. I've seen it in 24 hours fluctuate. So it's like you start your diet, you weigh yourself and let's just say you're down a couple pounds that day for whatever reason. And so you're two pounds down and then you're eating well, exercising all week long. And now you weigh yourself again and now you're up two pounds, right? And you get on the scale and it's like, maybe you lost two pounds during the week. So now it looks like you gained two pounds, right? And what's that do to your mindset? So if you weighed yourself every day, you would have, you know, you have a much more accurate view of, of where your weight's going, you know? And again, you don't want to weigh yourself every day because you're terrified of the scale, but you're not really terrified of the scale. You're terrified of what the scale reveals, which isn't your weight. It reveals that you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You, you don't know how to lose weight. You have a vague idea that I should stop eating carbs or I should eat one meal a day or I should eat 1,200 calories. You have some vague idea what you should do, but you have no, no mindset strategy for how to actually get yourself to do it. And I think the scale reveals that. And that's why I think you're so terrified of the scale because the scale should be just like the speedometer of your car. You're not scared to look at the speedometer of your car right? Because if you look at, oh shit, I'm going too fast. You slow down or you go, I'm going too slow. You speed up. You know how to control the speed of the car. So you're not worried about the speedometer. You see, you're worried about the scale because it reveals that you don't, you don't know how to lose weight, which is this very depressing thought considering you spent decades trying to lose weight, you know, but that's the message I'm here to tell you is that you're never going to lose weight with a diet. You're never going to lose weight with a diet plan when you're just being told what to do. That's not your problem. You already know what you should and shouldn't eat. Your problem is you don't know how to get yourself to live that way and eat that way consistently because you never learn how to deal with your mindset. You know, once you learn how to deal with your mindset, everything gets easier. Um, Kimmy says, is calorie counting better or portion control better? Um, I mean, I don't know. It, it depends on you. Um, is counting calories better or portion control better? I mean, I would use both of them. You know what I mean? Don't be an either or. I was just at a call and I was talking about this. Losing weight in this society, in this culture is a fucking war. It's a war, man. You've got to have that mentality. If you just think you're going to like, you know, casually lose the weight, no way. Losing weight is, it's like, it's like to say, I'm going to learn to play the piano. I'm going to learn another language. you got to commit to it and you got to use everything at your disposal to succeed because we live in an environment where you have nonstop forces coming at you constantly to get you to overeat. You know, I, I mean, like the, the, the food companies, the diet companies, and the medical companies are t trillion, trillion dollar businesses all built around you being overweight and unhealthy and overeating, you know? So you, you got to use everything at your disposal. So I would, I, I don't think calorie counting is good. So to get specific in your question, I don't like calorie counting as a long-term strategy because it's it's tedious and most people don't want to do it, me included. Um, but I think calorie counting is good for a week or so just to calibrate what your estimates are. You're probably underestimating the food you're eating. You know, you feel like you're doing everything. No matter what I do, I can't lose weight. No, you, you no matter what you think you do, you, you know what I mean? What you think you do is enough, but it's not. You're probably overeating more than you think you are. And so counting calories for a week to see, you know, how accurate am I? And then, then to be happy when you're not accurate. Oh, great. I thought I was eating 100 calories here. It's actually 400 calories. Great. Now you can fix it. Because if you don't know what the problem is, you can't fix it. And, and there's probably a bit of that with what you're dealing with now. And then portion control, I think, is set up better for a long-term success. Because um, portion control is something that you're going to consistently do. You know, now, again, you think a portion control is something you're going to do tomorrow to start your diet. I think a portion control is me. I've programmed myself to eat in a certain amount of food. So we, we look at it very differently and that makes all the difference in the world. But um, so I, I think portion control internalized as a long term strategy. Like, again, I program myself to eat a certain amount. Typically, that's a much longer term, better strategy. But the calorie counting was part of my strategy as well, because I had to get clear on what portions I was going to do based on how many calories are in them. And you can't trust your, you can't trust your, uh, your, um, 
your intuitions, you know, again, the idea of being an intuitive eater, well, maybe someday you can develop those intuitions, but certainly you don't have them now if you're overweight. And so you can't just become an, you can't just be an intuitive eater all of a sudden because you choose to be, um, you got the intuitions you got, you know? And so anyways, your intuitions though, again, are, are probably off a bit. Um, thanks for that 16 hour notes. You're welcome. Um, how do you stop yourself from emotional eating or eating to avoid feelings? Um, Jen, Jen, uh, the way you stop yourself from emotional eating or eating to avoid feelings is to deal with the actual feelings genuinely. This is one of my favorite things to talk about because I think everything weight wise ultimately comes back to the emotions. We live in a society where we condition to use food as the main way we deal with emotions, either to feel them. Oh, you know, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to feel excited because I'm going to eat some food that I really like and I'm looking forward to eating that. And that's the excitement I have for the day. The entertainment I have for the day is the food I'm going to eat. And or we got some shitty feelings and emotions we don't want to deal with. So we use the food to distract ourselves from them. You know, so how do you actually get through that? Well, you got to deal with the actual emotions that are there, right? So eating to avoid feelings, how do you deal with that? You deal with the feelings genuinely. And this is why don't stop yourself from emotional eating. Understand why you're emotional eating. You got different emotional eating patterns. So for example, you may sometimes eat at night because you're bored. And so that's a different emotional eating pattern than, you know, you just got in a fight with your boss and you're pissed off and now you're going to overeat emotionally. You said, I mean, they're two different things. And so they require two different solutions, right? Now you think the solution you have is I'll just will willpower and everything. I'll just stop myself from overeating, but you never dealt with the emotions. So it's not going to be a long lasting solution. So the real solution is to figure out, oh, I'm bored. That's why I'm eating. Don't stop yourself because you didn't deal with the bored thing. Instead, ask the question, how do I want to feel? I'd like to feel interested, excited, entertained. Okay, what are some ways I can feel entertained without food? Now, that's a wonderful question because now, again, we're just going to bring, oh, I could call a friend. I could practice my drawing. I could go practice my instrument. I could go for a walk. I could go see a movie, whatever. Just find something that's genuinely interesting, okay? Um, and then all of a sudden, it becomes a lot easier to deal with the emotional eating. So I hope that makes sense. Um, as I said, I've lost 20 pounds. Wait, where does that go? I lost 20 pounds since I stopped intermittent fasting. There you go. Um yeah, that's uh, yeah, Vicky. Thank you. Yeah, join Jim's program. That's exactly what it deals with. Yeah, we deal with emotional eating. We we deal with the mindset, right? The weight mastery pyramid is what I take you through. Okay, that that that's to master your weight, you got to master three things in in order of importance: your mindset, lifestyle, eating. Okay, and when it comes to mindset, the three the, the six categories of mindset are motivation. Do you know how to motivate yourself? Self image. Who do you want to be? Do you know how to be a thin, healthy person? identifies that person, become that person, your habits, how to strategically deal with your habits, emotions, the big one, right? Do you know how to deal with your emotions? Thinking, do you literally know the nuts and bolts of how to think like a thin, healthy person? And maintenance, do you know how to stay on the path long-term? You know, that's the mindset piece. So yeah, we, we go through all that stuff. Um, and as says, I've lost 20 pounds since I stopped intermittent fasting. That's not unusual because again, you got to understand there's 8 billion people on the planet. Intermittent fasting is going to be the most amazing thing in the world for some of them. And it's going to be the worst thing for some of them. And so you always have to reference your own experience of any of these diets or plans um, and bounce it against you. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, that's fine too. And you can move on. What I find a lot of people doing with the weight loss is they get themselves, they keep doing the same thing over and over. I mean, how many times you all tried keto? How many times you tried intermittent fasting? I mean, again... It, it's just, what's there's that saying, right? That the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result, right? And I think with weight loss, a lot of crazy people, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and again, it's not your fault. You've been conditioned by the diet industry, you know? Um, uh, it's, I just finished this book, Ultra Processed People, and it's got me, I mean, I know this shit anyways, but it's just, sometimes it's just put in a certain light and it's, it's I don't want to say it's depressing because I want to stay positive, but it's just, I don't know. You know, I went to business school. I don't know if anyone knows that. I went to business school. I got a finance and investments degree. And um, I remember, like, I started... Now, this is an unusual school because it wasn't an MBA, but it was basically... The whole school was like an MBA program. You know what I mean? Like, like my, my degree is literally in a, a, a Bachelor's of Business Administration. You know, so it, it's, it's a unique kind of thing. Anyways, the point being that I went there my final two years, my junior, senior year of college... And right before I went there, 
I talk about this sometimes, you know, because I was 50 pounds heavy. I was a binge drinker. I was, I was in a bad way. And um, I took a semester off from college. And during that semester, within about a month, I was exposed to hypnosis, neurolinguistic programming, Tony Robbins, personal development, martial arts, guitar, um, yoga, meditation. I, and I shit you not, I'm all of these things. And it really just, it transformed me from the inside out. And uh, one of the icings on the cake is I went to that school and the first orientation, the very first day, they had a hypnotist there. And he was a real hypnotist. This was amazing. Jerry Valley. And uh, he wasn't like a goofball with the stage stuff. He was like doing almost demonstrations of it. And I was like, holy shit, because I was already into it anyways. And it was very interesting because I started business school. And so there was business. And then there was kind of what I was doing, which was much more kind of inner work. And one of the worst parts that I experienced about business school was finding out, and you may all know this, this may be common knowledge, it wasn't to me at the time, is that every corporation is legally bound. Their, their prime objective, their only objective at the end of the day is to make more money. And I, I think we all know this to some degree, but when you study the nuts and bolts of it, it it's, it's, it's off-putting, I would say, you know, to some degree to realize there's no, there's no moral backing. There's no altruism. There, there's just, it's just money, making more money. And so you see like, you know, it, it's, it, it's uh, I don't want to get, <laughs> I'm in a funny mood today because everything went like shit at the beginning of the call, but um but it's just, when it comes to the food and the health of people, you know, again, I don't think people are trying to hurt you or kill you, but they also don't mind if they do. It's not going to stop them. It's just like the cigarettes companies, right? Like, I don't think those people want to give people lung cancer. It just so happens that you get lung cancer smoking their product and uh, they got to make a living. And so it's the same thing with the foods, you know? And um, I don't know. It's just, there's so much money made off of people being out of control with their eating that... Yeah, it gets back. It's a war. I mean, it's just it's a it is a hard path for you to walk to some degree. I'm not being very inspiring here today. <laughs> I ask myself, how do I want to feel after eating this? That's a great question, Ezra. Uh, how to know if I'm in a calorie deficit without counting calories? Um, well, okay, I love that question, and what I do is I like to take a more intuitive approach to eating and i don't want you to i don't want to get lost in that word because what i mean specifically is one of my favorite ways that people approach their weight loss and how i approached it is i was not a calorie counter what i did is i looked at how i typically ate and how i typically ate back in the day is i would eat breakfast which was usually not the worst cereal like a cheerios or rice krispies but then i put sugar all over it um i'd have white bread like wonder bread with jiff peanut butter that was my breakfast. Then within an hour or so, I'd have a snack, which was usually a muffin, a donut, a croissant, something like that. Then a couple hours later, I'd have lunch, which was usually a sandwich, chips, a cookie, that. Then in the afternoon, I'd have another snack. It was usually a bag of chips, candy bar, and or soda. Um, then I'd have dinner. That was usually the healthiest meal in the sense that it was the most nu nutritious meal. Like it was solid food, a lot of carbs, a lot of pasta, a lot of you know rice and stuff like that. But it was, it was a meat, vegetable as well. I'd overeat that. Then I'd, I'd eat all night. I'd, I'd snack all night. And so when I wanted to lose weight, I started to look at how I was eating and I said, what's my worst habit? That's what I started with. And so I started with my snacking habit at night and I really fixated all my energy on getting that under control. So I, but in my mind, I said, well, okay, well, if I keep everything the same, but I stop eating at night, uh, I'm going to lose weight. So you know what I'm saying? This is an intuitive approach to it. And I share this with everyone because I think once you start counting calories, I'm not saying it doesn't work because calories in, calories out is probably the most predictable way to lose weight, you know? But what I am saying is that it's a difficult thing to maintain. And so if you get, if you structure your eating so you consistently eat in similar patterns, I think you can do a similar thing where you just, again, until you get to your goal weight, you just strategically say, where can I cut calories out? And when you combine that with, again, tracking calories for a week or so, so you know, holy shit, okay, at night I'm probably eating five to 800 calories a night. Dinner's probably 1,400 calories. Um, that there is just 600 calories. And so you start adding it up and you start to have a sense of like, where is the biggest bang for my buck of energy? And I knew the nighttime snacking for me was that biggest thing. So that's kind of another way to go about it. Hannah said, why is it so hard to lose 10 pounds? That's all I need to lose. Any tips? Um, why is it so hard to lose 10 pounds? Um, well, right off the bat, you know, you're not going to like my answer, but that, that's the wrong question to ask. Okay. 
our subconscious mind is extremely literal. It's a servo mechanism. It answers the questions you ask, just like a computer is very, very specific. And so if you ask the question, why is it so hard to lose 10 pounds, your brain is going to come up with all kinds of answers like, because food's really good, because you got no willpower, because you're lazy, because you've always been overweight, because you've never been at your goal weight, because you suck, you're a jerk, you did this, and you just get a nonstop barrage of this. That, in essence, is your programming. You know, your programming is really delivered through your internal dialogue. You are talking to yourself day in and day out. And that conversation you're having with yourself has a huge impact on how you behave and ultimately what your weight is, okay? So um, the question I would rather ask is, how can I easily return to my, I'm going to assume 10 pounds from now, being 10 pounds down, you're, you'd be at your goal weight. So I would begin asking the question, how can I easily and comfortably drop the final 10 pounds so I can get back to my goal weight and live there the rest of my life on near autopilot, you know? And I would also change, that's all I need to lose. Um, you don't need to lose anything. I would again, and I know you don't like this. No one likes when people pick on their words in this way. But again, you got to be extremely literal with your subconscious mind. And I would say that's all. That's all I would. Um, th that's all there is to lose. Um, that's all I want to lose to live at my goal weight and and be as happy as healthy and the best version of myself possible. I hope that helps you. Out. I know that's not a satisfying answer to you, but toasted bagel with cream cheese. How's it going? It's been a while. I haven't seen you. Um, your all or something has helped me learn not to let my perfectionism derail me when I stumble. Yeah, absolutely, Erica. That all or something is one of the core uh, strategies of program yourself then. You know, no doubt about it. And it's very unique. I, I'll tell you that that's, that's a, I, I put a trademark on that because <laughs> uh, that, that's a, that's a something I came up with because again, it's, it stands in contrast to the all or, all or nothing thinking. I talk about this all day long when I'm coaching because the all or nothing thing is such a crock of shit. And perfectionists love this one. But perfectionism, you know, and I'm not picking on you because I'm a recovered perfectionist and I'm hard on myself um, with it. Because you, it's a way to like trick yourself, to make yourself feel like, oh, when I do things, I do it all the way. Oh, when I do things, I do it all 100%. Yeah, great, but you only do it 100%, 2% of the time. <laughs> so fuck you. <laughs> I say it to myself. I'm not saying it to you. But, you know, that perfectionist thing something is so high and mighty, you know, and it's like I, I like to knock it down a couple pegs because, again, all or nothing. Yeah, again, you're all 5% of the time and nothing 95% of the time. So who gives a shit about your, your all? <laughs> Think about it, right? Literally, you're, you know, with your dieting, if we put into diet mode, you know, you're, you're following your diet, you're tracking every calorie for um, a couple days, maybe a couple of weeks. And then, uh, you know, you're doing nothing you know, for months or years, you know, so being all or something is really the magic formula to get the results you want. Because the results you want that you really imagine in the back of your mind, you can't get in a couple months, you know, the, the, the results you really imagine in your mind getting are the accumulation of, of being on track and, and committing to something long term, you know, the diet industry has got you flipped inside out with your time frames and expectations. But what you're expecting is like has no place in reality. You know, the idea that you're just going to start a plan and in three months I'm back to my goal weight. Probably not, you know, depending on how much weight you got to lose. And even if you did, then you just get off your plan and you, I don't know. It's like, I guess why I say like weight mastery is a much better goal. But um, I'm glad that's helping you, Erica. That's, that's a super, super important um, strategy. Azra says, I get ravenous after running. I think I need to stop running and start walking. Um, yeah, sure. I think, again, there's two ways to go at that, Azra, right? And, and again, we want to experiment, you know, find out which way kind of fits best. Um, yep. Uh, and I see Danielle. I said, I'd highly recommend your program worth every single penny. It really is. It, it, God, it's something else, you know. It really is something else, that program. It's so good, I can't even believe it myself sometimes. I know that it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not appealing when people are being kind of conceited, but it's just... It's just a good program. What can I say? Um, so, okay, I get ravenous after running. I think I need to stop running and start walking. That's one side of the equation and test it out. The other side of the equation is that when you get back from running that you have some really healthy food there. Because um, if you are truly ravenous, that's a great opportunity to eat some healthy food. Because when you're truly genuinely hungry, um, healthy food's very appealing. You know, that's how you can always, a little litmus test to tell if you're really hungry or if you're just bored is how is healthy food appealing to you, right? If the healthy food's not appealing to you, you're probably just bored. If um, if it is appealing to you, then you're probably genuinely hungry, right? And that's a good good kind of point to take. Um, 
Todd, multiply. I thought the first few miles are easier to lose. Um, I meant a lot of it might be water. I thought the first few pounds are easier to lose is probably what you said were meant. Um, first few, I mean, it all just depends though. You know what I mean? It depends how much weight you want to lose. You know, if you're, again, everything's relative. And this is so important with weight loss because you're not looking at your weight loss relatively. You're looking at it absolutely based on all the diet ads you've seen in your life. And you've seen millions of them because every diet ad you've seen is a before and after picture and how long it takes to get one to the other. But, you know, every person is different. Um, again, you read, when you start watching like weight loss studies where they put people in metabolic labs and they're controlling every single calorie they eat and expend for months, you realize that a group of people, they all lose different amounts of weight. So, I mean, there's just so many variable factors. This is why I hate calorie counters because they tend to set people up for failure because they, you know, you, you always go with that. Oh, you, you're going to lose between two and three pounds a week. Let's just say, we're well, always going to think three pounds. And so it's like, you always just go to the top thing and you, you just, you're constantly setting yourself up to be disappointed. And the more disappointed you feel, the harder it is to keep going. But um, yeah, for some people, the first few pounds are really easy. And sometimes the first few pounds come off slowly. Depends how close you are to your goal weight, your metabolism. It's a million factors. So you just got to check for yourself, you know? Um, and you have to measure yourself and figure out you. How do you, how does your body deal with weight? I know for myself, from measuring myself every day, weighing myself every day, um, one of the things I learned about my body is that it usually takes about two weeks for if I start eating clean or if I start eating shitty, it takes about two weeks for that weight gain or loss to show up consistently. And that, that knowing that has been absolutely crucial for me because, you know, sometimes I'll start eating healthier. Okay, I'm going to lose some weight. I don't expect results for two weeks. You're not doing that. I had someone I got to, I'm going to write to. I don't know if she's here right now, but she's in the program. I'm going to make her a special video. So if you're watching this, I'm literally making a video for you. Um, but she goes, I've been on the program for, for seven days. Should I be worried that I haven't lost any weight? A lot of my behaviors are changing. And I've been eating better and things are going to be better. No, you shouldn't be worried at all because who knows? Again, how much weight should you lose in a week? What? Go ahead and answer it. You don't know. Maybe for you, you know. Maybe, and I bet you don't. You don't know how much weight you're going to lose in a, in a week. It gives this shit a week, you know? So, you no, know, you shouldn't be worried at all. You should be happy and celebrating that you've been changing your behavior and it's been easy and automatic. And I can keep doing it. Great. Because if you can keep that up, you're going to lose the weight. It's not, the weight's not the problem, folks. It's your behavior that's the problem. Right? Your, your weight loss isn't the problem. Your problem is you, you don't know how to keep your behaviors going the way you want them to go. So if you knew how to control you, if you were a robot, right? You were a cyborg and you just typed in what you're going to eat all day and then you just date it. Would you have any trouble losing weight? Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's it's not though. You don't have trouble losing weight. You have trouble changing your behaviors. You know? um, Erica says, "I think I've used my perfectionism as an excuse to give up when I didn't want to do the work." Uh, Erica, I would agree with that. I think very, very insightful. I, I agree with that a thousand percent. The perfectionist is just um, you're not going to like this term. Maybe I don't know, but it's it, it, we learned this in sales, and I, I find it to be useful. I think about it all the time. It's mental masturbation. You're just you're telling yourself a story that's bullshit, you know. And and again, usually how it shows up is, oh, I'm an all or nothing person. When I do something, I do it all the way. And then what happens is because that what that means subconsciously is, do oh, I can lose the weight because I do things all the way. And once I decide to do it, then I'm going to do it, you know. And meanwhile, it's 20 years later, and you haven't done it, you know. And uh, yeah. And so here's the thing, Erica, it, it, it's not even that you don't mind doing the work. The work of a diet is fucking impossible. You know what I mean? Like, like I can't think of, and it's set up that way. And boy, it's really set up that way on purpose. Cause you know, all the diets you're learning from folks are all owned by the big food companies. You know, did you know Weight Watchers was owned by Heinz? Jenny Craig was owned by Nestle. Um, Atkins Food Products is owned, was owned by the same company on Zanian's Pretzels and Cinnabon. Slim Fast, owned by the same company as Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Yeah. These guys are so obsessed with their bottom line. Do you really think they'd be promoting plans that cause you to hurt their bottom line? Because, I mean, you don't even know how obsessed they are with their bottom line. So I promise you, like I always joke, the second they buy Program Yourself then and blast that out to the world, I will eat my words. But that's never going to happen. Because the second Program Yourself then got blasted out to the masses, their bottom line would be fucked. Because people all the time on the program, without telling them specifically what to stop eating, as soon as you start to relax and calm down, as soon as you start to truly get clear on your goals, you naturally and automatically start to eat less of that shit. 
So you'll never see them buy program yourself and then blast it out to the world. You'll keep seeing these dumb diets that um that, that that don't work, you know? And not only do they not work, they just get you further and further stuck, you know? Yeah, that's what Danielle says. That was my first eye opener. Crazy who these companies are owned by. Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh, it's a, it's a disgusting web of lies. I I, I I'm still working on the book. I, I got a book, and I, I it's the next thing. I, I don't know. This is what do you want? It's called the planning fallacy. We think we can do more things that we can do in time, but I do have a book that I have coming out. Um, the six second diet, and that's the first one. It's a short one, but then there's the obesity conspiracy, and that'll be my magnum magnum opus. Is uh, that you know? I, I can't wait to to get that book out there because it's a it's a tangled, disgusting web of lies and bullshit. <laughs> I'm a, I was being a bad mood today. I think I, I'm triggered. And I was irritated because the the beginning of this didn't go the way I wanted it to, and there was some stuff going on. But um, and I just finished this book, which is it's sometimes sometimes it's this way. Anyways, but yeah, perfectionism is is bullshit. <laughs> Jody says, "Be conceited, you earned it." Thank you, I appreciate you saying that. Um, what if you cut calories way too low? Yeah, if you cut calories way too low, you will start eating more quickly. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? I'm not picking on you because I know this is the normal way a dieter thinks. But if you cut, I, and I know your question might be, what you're really asking is, if I cut calories too low, will I go into starvation mode and not lose weight? Um, starvation mode, as it's said, is really bullshit. I mean, folks, we've seen people in famine situations and there's no obese people walking around in famines. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, ultimately understand in the short term, um, weight loss is inconsistent and unpredictable, but in the long term, you reduce calories, you reduce weight. That's that. Okay, don't get confused. Yes, there's other factors in the short term, hormones, menopause, insulin resistance, Hashimoto's, PCOS, um, thyroid issues. Yes, in the short term, these things are going to affect how quickly or slowly you lose weight. But more often than not, they affect your appetite regulation. You're eating more than you think. But they can still affect how quickly or slowly you lose the weight. And there's just your metabolism. But we start looking at six months, 12 months of cutting calories. You're going to lose weight. Everyone will lose weight. Okay. Um, so there's that. And so, but, but the idea of like, if you cut calories too low, again, what I'm saying is if you cut calories too low, if you cut calories to 1200 calories, when you were eating 2,400, you're probably not gonna do it for very long. It's a drastic change and it's overwhelming. And you'll probably find that it's very difficult to maintain that. So if you cut calories too low, you might lose a little bit of weight and then you'll put it all back on because you can't keep it up, you know? Um, Hunger is the best sauce. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that for sure. Hunger is the best sauce. I think a lot of us in society don't even know what hunger is. You know, we, we get, we're so worried to feel hungry that we're almost like we're self-defense eaters. We're, we're so get, so used to like making sure we're not hungry that we're, all, we're never hungry and we're always full to some degree. Um, but I agree with that. Hunger is the best sauce. And so I think, again, you know, a lot of people, weight loss, hunger is such an interesting topic in and of itself. Because a lot of people subconsciously, dieters, when they want to lose weight, they want to be as hungry as possible because they associate with the fastest weight loss. And um, really, the hungrier you get, the less l l less time you're going to spend losing weight, most likely. You've got to manage your hunger strategically. So in Program Yourself Then, we use a scale, 0 to 10, 1 to 10. Um, 10 is stuffed, 0 is, 1 is starving. And um, I think where you want to be is somewhere in a 3, 4 if you want to lose weight mildly hungry you're gonna feel a little hungry folks if you're gonna lose weight one is that a you've reduced your calories so yeah it feels a little weird um and b is it's a different it's it feels weird so your brain makes it feel even worse but yeah you gotta reduce calories to lose weight and um if you reduce calories from the norm you're gonna feel a little hungry but feeling a little hungry is fine it's you you're feeling way too hungry you're getting yourself too hungry and then you can't control your eating you know, so again, you got to manage it strategically and hunger is the best sauce. Again, when you keep yourself that, that three, four, and you keep yourself in a natural state of hunger, um, then when it gets time to eat, you're able to make much better food choices because you are hungry. So you can eat healthier food, but you're not so hungry that you can't control your eating. So, so it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a fine game you're playing. You, you're learning to do. Um, Paula says, I'm not even focused on weight, not even trying mindset all the way. Yeah, exactly, Paula. And so Paula is such a great example of this because we're, we haven't talked. She's in the program. We're not talking about calories. We're focused on the worst eating habit for her right now. It's the eating at night. 
So Paula, if you if you eliminate that habit, if you stop eating at night, say it takes you a month or two to really get it get it down so that you just don't do it anymore. Like all of a sudden you've probably reduced three, four, five hundred, six hundred calories a night. That that's a substantial weight loss that you've achieved. But instead of looking at the weight loss that it achieves, let's focus on the behavior that you've changed and how easy it is for you to change it. The weight loss will follow. Again, in business, there's leading and lagging indicators. Um, your behavior is the leading indicator. Your weight is the lagging indicator. You, you, you can't, it's, okay, let's put it this way. Your weight is a reflection. Your weight is just a reflection. So it's like if you're looking at yourself in the mirror, like you're trying to draw on the mirror to try to change the reflection. You, you can't do it. The only way to change the reflection is to change what's being reflected. So your weight is just reflecting what you're, how you're eating and how you're living habitually. That's what you need to change. So the more fixated you get on that part of it and let the weight do what it does, the weight just becomes a speedometer. It just lets you know how this is going. And, and, and so if you focus on this piece, I don't know, it's a game changer. And you're not just focusing on this, like, oh, let me cut, cut, cut. It's not just cutting. It's how can I make it as easy and enjoyable as possible for myself? That's why we look at things strategically. We're looking for real elegant solutions, not to just chop half our calories off one day. That's a fucking dumb, that's not even a strategy, that's a tactic, and it's stupid. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop eating carbs starting tomorrow. Okay, let me know how that goes. Can I call you in a month and see how it's going? I don't need to, because I already know how it's going. You're not doing it. Do you know what I mean? Like, Jesus Christ, wake up, wake up. The keto people especially, <laughs> you're not gonna do it for long, so why do it for short? I don't understand that mindset, you know? But when you shift your mindset into like, how can I truly master the, the nighttime thing how can i master that for good so i don't i don't snack at night if I, if I if i get my head around that and really master that that's probably here's a little trick for you um to kind of re reinforce what i'm talking about so let's just say it's a nighttime snack and that's my worst habit don't just call it nighttime snacking i have a snacking habit okay because that minimizes what the reality of that's doing to you and so what i did is i remember habit i didn't say oh, i got a nighttime snacking habit i used to say i've got a 40 pound habit because I believe if I stopped snacking at night, I would a year from now, I'd be 40 pounds lighter. So that's a fun little game to do because it gives the habit more context. Because we're like, oh, I got a little, a little snacky habit. I got a little, yum, 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 a little, little chocolate habit, <laughs> right? That sounds so benign and almost cute. You know, it's kind of, that's kind of nice, you know? But really like that little habit that's so cute might be responsible for an extra 30 pounds on your body that's making your life fucking miserable. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So again, I, I'm, uh, you know, th there's, it, that comes back to mindset though, right? It's about how we look at it. It's not just, oh, I'm going to look at like my, my cute little habit my, my grandma used to do with my grandma. I'm just going to stop doing that. Well, that's going to be a hard thing to continue, right? But if you look at like, oh, this little habit's responsible for 40 extra pounds on me, my insulin resistance, my shortened lifespan. I can't get on the floor and off the floor. I feel like shit every morning when I wake up. Well, now once you reframe it that way, it's going to be a lot easier. So, so everything comes down to mindset ultimately, you know. Um, Arizona wildflower, I love your wisdom. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Um, people start out good, like Atkins and Guidry. They then sell out to the big companies. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I, I agree with that. I mean, Weight Watch is a good example of that. It was a lady in New Jersey, altruistic, you know what I mean, genuinely trying to help people, and then it got bought. Um and they, they, you know, as soon as they got bought, you know, they used to have Weight Watchers meetings in the back of, in, in supermarket freezers, because really it was basically just a, a shitty way to sell their shitty food. They were always selling their, um, their, their meals, you know, that's why I was by, owned by a big food company. So yeah, it's true. They sell to the big companies and the big companies just ruin it all. So I was so bummed. I just found out the other day that Rayo's, which is my favorite tomato sauce on the planet, um, sold to Campbell's. So I'm just expecting that quality to go down now, but we'll see. Intermittent fasting drops sugar from 400 to 156. That's great. That's great, just me. Um, here's what I'm going to say, and, and I'm, not, I'm not disputing those numbers. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that you don't necessarily have to intermittent, like, because they'll say, oh, intermittent fasting helps all the numbers. It helps balance your hormones and your insulin resistance and all that. Um, but it's like, well, what are we defining as, you know, because that's, it's the definition. So do you have to not eat for 16 hours a day for that to happen? And that, that's not true. If you start eating healthier and start losing weight, the same results are going to happen. That's what I'm trying to say. The diets always have to make it seem like they've got the magic sauce. 
like intermittent fasting is a great example of this, right? Because it's like, why is there even a book about intermittent fasting? Just stop eating for 16 hours, right? But instead, intermittent fasting is a whole, it's a whole uh, industry now. <laughs> How, right? How is this possible? Um, because we make it more than it is, you know? And so I think this does a lot of detriment. And so people say, oh shit, well, I tried intermittent fast. Oh, intermittent fast dropped my sugar. I, I, that's what I got to do. And then you do it and it's miserable and you can't do it. And you say, ah, oh, shit. But what if you said, okay, well, what if I cut my eating window? I make my eating window 12 hours. Right now it's 16 hours. You know, so I cut it down to four hours. So again, I'm just saying that if we stop being so rigid, if we stop being so rigid with everything, we can um, usually get much better results. Because one thing they found uh, science-wise is that uh, the, the, probably the biggest thing that affects a diet's ultimate success is uh, how strict and rigid it is, right? Because again, as a dieter, you're only looking at a short term. Oh, shit, yeah, I can do that for a little while. Um, but in the long term, you don't want to not eat carbs the rest of your life. You know, and I mean, fast and a little different. You get used to it, I suppose, you know, but, uh, but that also depends too, you know, intermittent fasting. Yeah. Great. Until you, you lose your job and you start a different job and it's got different hours or different situation. Let me know how that goes. You know, it's like that with a lot of these diets. They're not flexible necessarily. So the flexibility is a huge impact, but just me again, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. And, and again, I'm, I'm not sitting here shit talking intermittent fasting. I'm just saying it's not the only way to drop your blood sugar. Um, self-defense eaters, you say things that make all kinds of light bulbs come on for me. That's funny, right? Yeah, the self-defense eater thing is so funny. I, I love that one. God forbid we're hungry. <laughs> Jim, will this be uploaded to your podcast? I have to get to work. Thank you. Yeah, these are always uploaded. So remember, you can always, folks, oh, shit, I haven't even said today. If you're not in my world, go to my bio, click the link at the hypnosis session, watch the training. Um, I'm putting it together now. I got a whole spark program I'm giving you guys. Okay, it's so cool. It'll have the hypnosis session, have the trainings there. There's a mindset challenge. Um, I email you every day. I, you know, it's really exciting. I got cool things coming down the pike. Um, I'm really excited because what I do right now, really for the last year, is I've really been focusing on my group coaching program, and um, which I have absolutely loved. I've been doing private coaching for years, which has been my main thing. And I still do that a little bit. But um, the thing about private coaching, it, it's really, to be honest, it's, it's, it's people that are, they have a lot of money. It's 25 grand to work with me, but it's the Robin Hood model. You know, I, I do that so that I'm able to make things a lot cheaper for everyone else. Um, but, you know, it's people, people you would know, you know, celebrities, people in movies. Um, so they got that money. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Money's relative. You don't even got to understand that, right? So it's like, you know, one of the things that does, you know, when you're really super duper duper committed to something, working with a coach, someone outside of yourself is, is a real smart investment and investments are relative, you know, to how much money you make. So again, someone making, you know, millions of dollars a year, 25 grand, isn't that much, you know? So it's gotta be a high level. So they show up for it. You know what I mean? So there's that, but I've been doing my group coach coaching program, um, which has been a thousand dollars. You work me for eight weeks. That's been the deal of the century, but I know even that is, is, um, you know, I understand financial realities. Uh, so, I've had the $300 program, which is the whole program just without coaching, but that I'm going to be offering now. And there's going to be a live class every week. So it's not the coaching because the coaching I keep small so I can literally work one-on-one -on -one with people and give them a lot of attention. Um, so that's going up to $2,000. It just is what it is. I, I, I wish I could keep it cheaper, but it just is what it is. Um, but the, the $300 program is going to stay at $300 and it's an eight-week program. You get lifetime access to it. There's so much stuff you get with it. And I'm going to have the live class, which is, it's always been the sticking point for me because I'm always working to make these techniques that I teach in the program as like simple and obvious as possible. But I've never really felt satisfied that like so often I need to kind of just like, someone's kind of doing it, but they just need a little tweak to get it right. And so now with the live classes that I'll be doing, it'll be a lot of people, but it, we're going to be going through the program Every week we'll be doing work on the program. So whatever questions people ask, it's going to help everyone because we'll be talking about the techniques in the program, okay? Where the coaching is, that helps everyone too, but it's also, it's like, it's more specific to whatever's going on with that person. I kind of meet them there and, and help them. The, the, the program yourself thin classes will be much more, it's always going to be about the techniques so that you're always learning how to use the techniques for yourself. And so I'm super excited about that. That's something I haven't been able to do until now and I can't wait um, so that'll be coming down the pike very quickly here. 
And, um, and there's even going to be a $100 program, which um, will give you the daily hypnosis sessions and everything. And that's cool. And then again, when the book gets out here, that'll be a dollar. But, but then there's the free thing, the Spark program, and that's really cool too. So again, but, but go, go to my bio, click the link, get, in the, get the hypnosis session. Now you're on my email list and, and you'll know about all that stuff. But yeah, so the Spark program is going to be completely free. And um, I've got things in there already, and I'll be putting more things in there and um, doing things for you. So again, my goal, I already know, I don't think anyone gives more away than I do, as far as I can tell. Um, again, my mission in life is to help as many people as possible live at their goal weight. Um, and then one other program, and again, I actually have this now, but I'd never promote it, but it's called Program Yourself Then Weekly. Um, that might become Weight Mastery Club, and that's a, a week-to-week program where every week there's a new lesson. You're going to get a hypnosis session with it. There's monthly challenges. You get daily emails, um, and that's going to, and that, that's going to be like $10 a month. So I uh, can't wait. You know, get all this stuff coming. It, it's really exciting because I'm going to be helping a lot more people, um, and I kind of apologize if, if financially, if finance is a little tight, and I've been out of the range, that's all going to change. And I'm super excited for that. Um, yeah, I put all these in the podcast. And the podcast is free too. So that's another thing. I mean, Jesus, that that's amazing. You listen to the podcast, you listen to me every day, you will start losing weight comfortably and easily. Um, Yerba Mate tea is a natural GLP agonist. Uh, it gently suppresses appetite for the hungry folks. Um, yeah, I don't believe that. Uh, there's no tea that's going to help you lose. I'm not saying it doesn't have the tiniest little effect, but no way. Um, no tea is going to fix your weight issue. If you start eating more natural, healthy, whole foods, that'll fix your appetite issue. Okay? Now, food noise. You wonder why I got food noise? Because you're putting no nutrition into your body. You're eating a lot of processed foods and you're not nourishing your body. Think about it, folks. When you're not getting enough calories into your body, what happens? You get hungry, right? Your body sends you a hunger signal. Well, if you're not getting enough micronutrients in your body, your body's going to send you a hunger signal, okay? So you can drink all the tea you want. Um, Until you nourish your body and give it what it truly needs, you're always going to feel hungry because your body's trying to protect you. Your body body still thinks you're, uh, it's a thousand years ago and you're in a natural environment where when you eat, it means nutrients. Doesn't realize, oh no, oh no. It's modern day, 2024. We could eat 5,000 calories and get no micronutrients, you know? So... Um, yeah, that's that. <laughs> What's up, Sophia? I love that name, Sophia Philosophy. That, that's I love that. Hi there. Here I got a pretzel emoji. Do you love pretzels? Is that your name? I love that one. Um, what's your podcast called? It's called the Program Yourself Then. And it's on all the platforms. So go listen to it. And then if you listen to it and you like it, leave me a little review type something out be like this guy holy shit this guy really knows what he's talking about write something that helps me out get this out um i don't know i got i guess so many things going i gotta start promoting them better you know i've been on tiktok but it's like i kind of neglect the other things so i'm coaching all day i'm talking about weight loss all day long you guys don't see this right i'm coaching all day long i'm doing group coaching private coaching i'm constantly talking about this stuff i'm obsessed with it i love it it's a mission for me um, I really, my, yeah, my goal in life is to help as many people as possible live at their goal weight. So, um, I'm two third, I'm going to say that means two, I'm two, three pounds away from lowest weight that I sabotage from binging during holidays. How do I not repeat? Um, yeah, well, you know, again, I nitpick this with people. I don't think it's that you're sabotaging yourself as much as it is that you don't know how to live at your goal weight. Um, What I always say is that, you know, you got two mindsets within you right now. You've got an overweight mindset and you've got a diet mindset. And at best, you diet your way down to your goal weight, but the same problem exists. You you got an overweight mindset, a diet mindset. So are you sabotaging yourself? Are you getting to a point where you can't keep dieting and you don't know how to think like a thin, healthy person, right? Because again, you know how to think like an overweight person. You know how to think like a dieter, but you do not know how to think like a thin, healthy person. And no one's teaching you that. Um, that's what I'm attempting to do here. This is why I would strongly suggest if you haven't yet, go get the hypnosis session I give you through my bio or at Program Yourself Then. And most importantly, watch the training. Because your goal, user 569, is not to lose weight. Your real goal is to live at your goal weight. They're two totally different goals. And so, again, I think a lot of times what happens with dieters is they've, they've gotten to their goal weight so many times and then put the weight back on as they start getting a lot of anxiety as they start reaching their goal weight. Because again, what, what's really going on subconsciously is that you can't keep dieting and you don't know how to think like a thin, healthy person. You're scared to death. You're going to start thinking like an overweight person. 
I was saying this yesterday that, you know, the dieter mantra, the main dieter mantra is I just want to lose weight. I just want to lose weight. I just want to lose weight. And then the dieters mantra, once they get to their goal weight, if they get there is I don't want to put the weight back on. Holy shit, please don't put the weight back on. I don't want to put the weight back on, you know? And so again, it just, it reveals the fact that you don't know how to think like a thin, healthy person. And so that's why I don't think it's a sabotaging thing. You know, I think it's that you don't know how to think like a thin, healthy person. And once you know how to think like a thin, healthy person, then you know, you, you'll be fine. Um, pretzel says, I always crave spicy and salty food. I need to figure out a way to suppress that. Um, I wouldn't suppress it. You know, I'd never suppress anything because anytime you work on suppressing something, good luck. Let me know how that goes. Um, I think, you know, you just become strategic with your eating. Uh, I would, you know, when it comes to salt, again, we all know the health effects of salt, but I think the thing I look at with salt is that it's a huge appetite increaser, you know? And so, um, you know, you don't have to suppress it, but you just need to be more, more strategic. And again, a lot of times the, the solution is to nourish yourself better. That helps a lot. Um, I've been listening to your podcast emails. I feel that I'm doing good. Watch lives too. Nice job. That's great. Yeah, watch the training. So yeah, you've been listening to the, okay, email. So you're up on that list. So make sure you watch that training. I was just talking to um, that uh, I got some other, more accessible programs coming coming your way. And I got a free program coming up. I'm call, I call it the Spark Program. It's really built to motivate you. That, that's kind of the goal of it, but that'll be completely free. So if you guys sign up, you'll get access to that. I, I should have that. I just started working on it. I have the stuff for it. I just, I'm kind of making the web, the membership area. Um, but I should have that done next couple of days. Um, yeah. All right, cool. All right, everyone, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much. Sorry for the, the rough beginning if you were here for that. <laughs> and uh, it'll be better tomorrow. So thank you very much, everyone. Again, if you want to get in, get in my world, go sign up at the bio, click the link at the hypnosis session, listen to it, watch the training, though. That's the key thing. And uh, yeah, the podcast is Program Yourself Then It's on all the platforms. And if you don't watch me or follow me, follow me, right? Because then I'll just pop up randomly and that'll, that'll help you more than anything. Um, Charlie says, I weighed myself this morning and I've only lost three pounds since new year, trying hard to stay positive. Um, yeah. Okay. Charlie. So again, back to that point. Um, if you lose three pounds, if you keep, if you maintain that, that horrible weight loss, that slow, terrible three pounds a month weight loss, you'll be 36 pounds lighter next year at this time. How would you feel being 36 pounds lighter? I'm going to assume good. So the secret isn't just how much weight we're losing. It's how, how we lose it. So if you kill yourself to lose three pounds and you're not going to do it, but if you do small, sustainable, easy changes to lose three pounds, then it's easy to maintain. And then three, three pounds turns into six pounds. Six pounds turns into 20 pounds. 20 pounds turns into 36 pounds. So I get it though. But uh, again, it's all mindset. It's all about reframing. Yep. Um, so make sure you follow me, Charlie, and get that thing. Because again, watch the training. It, it, it talks a lot about things like that. And um, again, once you watch the training, you'll have a, a, a deeper context, structural context for what I'm talking about. And then um, when we get on the lives, you'll be able to ask much more specific questions and I'll be able to speak in a way that's going to be way more impactful and, and relevant and, and helpful to you. All right. But great job anyways, Charlie, great job. Because changing anything for, for a month is, is quite an accomplishment. So again, I'd be less focused on the three pounds and more focused on the changes that you've accomplished and um, how easy were they for you? How dramatic were they for you? And I'd focus on those things. Okay. And the weight loss will come. Some people lose weight quickly. Some people lose weight slowly, but you're going in the right direction. So that, that's a positive thing. All right, everyone have a super day and we'll talk soon. Bye.